What's going on, YouTube, and welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson, joined by my co-host, Colin Alcaves. And today, we're going to be doing a little deep dive discussion into Alexi Lafreniere. Currently, he's only played in three games this preseason, in which he has not found the back of the net once, only has one assist to his name so far. And Lafreniere is one of those types of players who the Rangers are really hoping is going to have some sort of breakout season this year. But what we've seen so far hasn't looked too promising. But before we really get into it, Colin, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be recording on this back-to-back, -back, hoping to get a stretch of episodes going this week. I want to pump out some content for you guys since we've uh, we've been a little busy. Yes, I agree. The content will continue to flow as we inch ever closer to opening night. It's just nine days away now, so we'll be sure to cover everything Rangers leading up into that and the full coverage of the 2023-2024 season. But let's just get right into things really quick. Lafreniere... Um, only one point throughout the preseason so far, right? Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a hard thing to really judge on because it has only been three games. You know, players go through, like, rough patches, especially after a long season of, like, a long off season of just not really playing at all. And you know, there's been some question about Lafreniere's off-season work ethic where other players continue to train and stay in shape, and Lafreniere might not be doing that so much. But just to start things off, like, Panic level one through ten. How bad of a sign do you think this is for this upcoming season from Lafreniere? Uh, I'd say at about a four or five. I think coming off of a disappointing postseason as well is why I'm a little higher and I'm I'm almost wary to go to a six. But um, I think he'll be fine. He's still very young. I mean, he's only 21 years old, turning 22. Um, and if you look at his points throughout his career, I mean, he's got 91 points in 216 games, almost an even split between goals. Uh, 47 goals and 44 assists and his five on five play i think he's in the top three in rangers and five on five goals for the last two seasons so i mean his five on five play is big and hopefully with live event system he will thrive um and he's also still so young so he's got a lot of upside but it's definitely concerning to see him struggling as much as he has been considering how he finished last season coming into the season he thought maybe he'd have a little bit of a fire under him uh especially now again he's on a bridge deal he's got a lot to prove in order to to uh, get some guaranteed money on that next contract. Yeah, and I, I agree with you there. Like, I mentioned it last episode where, like, the point of preseason is really just for the prospects and these young rookies to prove themselves and show their development to the Rangers. And the NHL regulars are really just there to get warmed up for the NHL season that's coming up. So, like, you have all these big other names on the Rangers, like Panarin, Zibanejad, Kreider. They also haven't been huge point producers so far this preseason. But I think the reason why Lafreniere is receiving so much criticism and, you know, kind of toxic hate from the fans a little bit um, is mainly because he does have the most approved out of almost any Ranger on this team. Like you said, he's on the first year of a two year bridge deal where, like, he's going to have to start sh um, showing what he's made of. Um, first overall in 2020, you know, he hasn't made an immediate like break out into a star, you know, like not everyone's going to be like Connor McDavid enter the league and start putting up a hundred points, but you know, we're in year four of his contract of, of his career now fresh onto his second contract. And it, with a career high of only 39 points, you know, he's going to have to start showing some kind of development. So like heading into this season, like what, what are you hopeful for from Lafreniere? Let's just say that he's just getting warmed up. Like what kind of season does Lafreniere need to have? Uh, I'm hopeful that he he's finally puts it all together. I think he he doesn't up until this point he hasn't really felt the fire of like potentially not being there. Um, and if you look at the practice lines today, Othman was slotted in on that second line. They moved Lafreniere down to the third line, cycling out with Cooley. Um, I think that is going to be a wake up call. I think the scratches last season were a bit of a wake up call for him when he got scratched a couple times and he came back and he played better. Um, but I think he is realizing this year that he could be fighting for a roster spot. Um, I'm not entirely opposed to starting him in the AHL, letting him garner some confidence down there and coming up. I know that's a little bit of a hot take, but um, I said in the previous episode, I wish that they had done that with Kako and Laugh, and, and they, I felt they rushed them both a little bit and it hindered their development. And um, I think I, it could benefit him, but for him to, to really succeed the season, I think he needs to block out all the noise. I think playing in New York is very difficult as it is. We're a very um, critical fan base. And watching guys like McDavid and Bedard and Eichel and, and not even first overall, but first, second, third, watching these guys come in. I mean, Timmy Stutzla come in and outperform him is definitely frustrating. 
and reading all the comments and, st and stuff from other fan bases saying we don't know how to develop, it just kind of adds to our, our anger about him not really coming along as, as much as we'd hoped. Um, but at the end of the day, I think he's going to be fine. I think we have to look at him as more of a Nathan McKinnon type of curve maybe, where if you look at Nathan McKinnon's numbers when he first came in, he struggled uh, greatly, and then he just it clicked at some point, and he became the superstar that he is today. Um, so I think we need to, to pump the brakes on him being a bust and him really struggling. Oh, my bad. And uh, and hope that he can he can put it all together, similar to what Nathan McKinnon did or what Jonathan Huberdeau did, and uh, become the star that we all know he can be. Yeah, you're, you're right. And I, I think we are being a little overly critical of Lafreniere as well, where like it, there is a little bit of a curve. You know, he's he's seen growth and development throughout his career. Um, I don't have it pulled up, but I believe his first NHL season, he scored like 31 points or something in that range. And then now just last season, he had the career high of 39. So like, although it hasn't been any substantial like increases in point totals, like it is still going up. And it's like it's not a race. Like I'm not sure if I agree that he would need time in the in the AHL. I think he is a good NHL player. He's just not a star just yet. And I think one of the main contributing factors to that is the fact that he hasn't really been given a lot of opportunities to succeed. You know, he started off in the bottom six. Um, Gallant then came in and like tried experimenting with him in the top six, but it, like after like one or two games of no points. He was just immediately sent back down. I think Gallant was a very controversial coach as well. You know, maybe not the best fit for developing young guys like that. But hopefully with LaViolette now on the bench, um, Lafreniere could be receiving these top six minutes. Um, you know, we've seen experiments throughout training camp and preseason so far of him on the right wing on both the first and second line. But then, like you said, now just today, he was down on the bottom six again with Brendan Othman filming in that top six role. So, do you think his preseason performance so far has been kind of hurting his chances at receiving more ice time? Or do you think that when the regular season gets going, Lafreniere will just still be up there in the top six? I think uh, Laviolette may be trying to send a message that nobody's safe. I think when it comes to the bona fide superstars, as we mentioned before, Panera and Kreider, Zbigniew, they're all just getting their legs under them, yes, but because we know what they can do at the NHL level and what they've consistently done over the course of their careers, right? I mean, we've seen Zibanejad's point totals go up, 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 and he's constantly a very good player, scoring 30 goals, over 40 assists, maybe even 50. Lafren, uh, um, Panarin is close to in, in the mid-90s in points almost every year, and he actually just had, for the first time in his career, less points than the previous year. He's gotten more points every year before this year. Um, so I think we don't know what they're capable of, so they don't have as high stakes. I think Lafreniere needs to realize that there are guys knocking on the door. I mean, we constantly talk about Brendan Othman on this channel and how good he is. And if he continues to outperform him, that's the only reason why, for me, there's concern that he could start in the AHL, just to show him that he's not necessarily safe. Just because he got that bridge deal and he has a little bit of guaranteed money, that it doesn't mean that he's guaranteed to make this roster. Now, do I hope he makes this roster? 100%. I hope he's able to turn it around and uh, and and ignore all the hate that he's getting and all the the slander. I just uh, read an article earlier earlier today that people were calling him uh, for him to be cut. I think that's ridiculous. I don't want to see him moved. I don't want to see him like cut. I want him on the Rangers. Um, I just want him to realize that there's he's on a little bit of a hot seat now and and hopefully ramp up the pressure and you know figure out what he's got to figure out to become the player that we know he can be. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you 100% there. I don't want to see a move. I've been a big fan of Lafreniere ever since we drafted him. And although it hasn't been perfect, I think there is it's still too soon to be labeled a bust. He's only 21 years old. Like, the kid needs time to really just get things going. But, um, like, who knows what Chris Jury's thinking? You know, Lafreniere has this season and then one more season to really prove himself. But um, if the 2023-24 season coming up right now, if Lavernier starts off like really bad and he's not producing points at all, do you think there's any chance that Jury could look to trade him at all, or do you think he's going to 100% play through both years of this deal? It's hard to tell because we've seen the Jury masterclass. We haven't really seen him falter yet, and we've seen him be very aggressive with his moves. So there's no telling what he really could do. I think he recognizes that the window is now to win. Um, and it's closing quickly with how strapped to the cap we are. Um, but I think that he's more likely to keep Lafreniere. It's hard to move uh, former first and second overall picks 
just because of the value that they held at the time. And I remember when we got Lafreniere, like I was jumping up and down. You and me were about to throw a party. Um, so, and he's still so young. Uh, it, it, I feel like he plays through this deal and and remains a ranger for the entirety of his contract. But it'd be tough to see him moved. And it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. I'd say it's more likely than not, though, that he stays a ranger. Yeah, I mean, I think so as well. But, you know, anything is possible these days with Drury. You know, he just makes some crazy trades. They usually end up working out in our favor. But um, who knows what's going to happen in the future. And, you know, it's only been three preseason performances from Lafreniere. I know Laviolette has said that out of the two remaining, Lafreniere isn't going to play in both. He'll likely be sitting out again in tomorrow's game and then will likely play in the preseason conclusion against Boston. So who knows, you know, there's a chance that Lafreniere could easily explode in that last game, maybe have like a hat trick or something and really just shut everyone up. <laughs> um, but I guess we'll see what happens throughout the remainder of preseason. Um, I think it is still a little too early to be making any extreme criticisms on, criticisms on it. Yes, it has been a little bit of a slow start, but it's only been three games. You know, he has a whole season ahead of him to really show his development and what he's worth to the Rangers. But me and Colin will be back most likely tomorrow with more Rangers content. Leave your thoughts on this topic down in the comments below. Are we being too overcritical of Lafreniere? And is it time to hit the panic button and look for a possible switch? Or do you think everything's going to be just fine with the former first overall pick? But until we reach you back with more content, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss a notification. Have a good one. And let's, let's go, go Rangers. Rangers.